There are plenty of good videos on Eastbourne by East Sussex anglers, such as the Eastbourne Fisherman, CJ and Saltwater Angler, to just mention three. So this video is from the perspective of a visiting angler and focuses on daytime sessions on marks that are fished during autumn and winter. Hopefully this will be of some use to those visiting Eastbourne to fish there at this time of the year. For anyone unaware, Eastbourne lies between Brighton and Hastings on the south coast at the eastern end of the South Downs National Park. It is adjacent to the chalk cliffs that run from Seaford to Beachy Head and for the purpose of this video I'm regarding marks east of Sovereign Harbour as being part of Pevensey Bay. Working eastwards, the first mark you come to is Hollywell. This is accessed via Eastbourne Promenade by the Hollowell Tea Chalet. I've not personally fished this mark and any visiting angler needs to be aware that it's a rough ground venue and it best looked at at low tide before you start fishing. A bit further along but still part of this stretch, the beaches are accessed from the cliff top gardens via steep paths such as a crow's nest walk. One good thing is that from November to March the parking is free along King Edward's Parade. At low tide you can see one of the reasons why I haven't fished this stretch. There is a ridge of rock or reef as some anglers would call it stretching all the way along from the slipway at groin 21 to those chalk cliffs. No doubt this feature would have some fish pudding power but I personally haven't had the time to explore this area. I'm only guessing but it also appears to me as if it's more likely to produce in the summer rather than in the winter. So the first mark I fished in the winter is at Wish Tower. There is metre parking alongside Western Lawns but you'll still be paying throughout the winter. I have to be honest and say that all of the times I've fished here I haven't been very successful, only catching whiting and some of these are right at the death just as the light is fading. I've fished it both at low water as in this clip and at the top of the tide that didn't seem to make a difference with bites being very few and far between and I've tried all sorts of rigs from short snood and long snood flappers, clip down rigs, various types of boom rigs with and without beads but none of these seem to make any difference. I might have just been unlucky on the sessions that I've fished here but uh, in my opinion there appears to be an awful lot more fish going towards the other side of the pier and heading towards Lagney Point. However I do know that some people do catch whiting and dogfish here at night and there's a odd chance of getting a thornback ray as well. So no fish to see from this session although I did catch two whiting right at the time I was packing up but the light was too dark already uh, for that to come out on film properly. If you do intend to fish here there are a couple of things worth noting. First of all the ground is quite clean so you're not likely to be losing much kit. Uh, but secondly avoid parking by the lifeboat museum. As you can see the charges are quite astronomical. Moving along we come to the bandstand section along the promenade. Parking becomes more of an issue and I haven't seen anyone fish here. Then we have a pier. Now I'm not really one for fishing man-made structures so I'm not best placed to comment on that. I know it can be good so I'm sure at some point I'll get round to fishing it. As we move from Marine Parade to Royal Parade we come across marks that I'm more familiar with and once you pass Langham Hotel free parking now becomes available. In my experience the fishing at the Langham Hotel section of the Royal Parade seems to be a lot better than that at Wish Tower the other side of the pier. Parking is free along the side roads and in autumn it's pretty much dominated by scaldy bass. The clips at the beginning of this video and here give an indication of the size that we're talking about. Not massive but enjoyable sport on light gear. Redoubt Fortress is one of my favourite spring and autumn marks and I devote the latter part of this video to a session filmed here in the autumn. I avoid the sailing club and fisherman's green section and devote most of my time on beaches to the east of here starting with the southern beach hut section. There's a large car park here adjacent to Fort Fun 
and I have devoted a whole video on an autumn session here so please check the link above. Short snowed clip down rigs work well here a variety of species including place, white, pouting, bass and sole. There is now a path running behind a beach all the way to Langley Point so there's good access and plenty of beach space to choose from. The fishing can be particularly good in front of Sovereign Centre and Skate Park but I tend to home in on Sovereign Park itself. You can park for free in certain sections along Prince William Parade and walk along designated pathways across the park till you get to the beach. The groins are partially buried by shingle but you can still make out the numbers of most of them and there are metal tags which I think are probably linked to match fishing. I've found this area to be particularly good at low water and I have a video dedicated to catching winter place here. For more details do follow the link in the top right hand corner. Following on from this nature reserve area is probably the best known of Eastbourne Marks. A lot of anglers head to this area and there are car parks either side of the waterworks and parking is fairly reasonable. It may be useful to know that there are public toilets in a car park uh, immediately behind groin 87. As you can see the shingle beach is quite steep here and this links to the fact that there is deep water off Langley Point itself. This is what probably makes it such a popular mark and at times the fishing can be pretty prolific. I have a couple of videos focused on winter fishing here so do check out the links above. Squid will almost always catch you large channel whiting and lugworm in various forms will get you the usual suspects rockling, dabs etc. Fishing with fairly large squid baits on pulley panels or as in this case Portsmouth Loop also gives you a chance of catching dogfish and uh, occasionally you might be lucky enough to get a codling. At night there's also the chance of rays. The point itself is at groin 91 and the water outlet but there are three groins beyond which subdivide the beach and these are also well fishable. Beyond these and a the Martello Tower you come to the end of this stretch at Sovereign Harbour. So that was just a quick rundown of the Eastbourne stretch from my experience. Now for a session at Redoubt Fortress filmed in October. This is one of my favourite marks and it is also referred to by locals as Splash Point, not to be confused with Splash Point in Seaford. I particularly like to fish it in the autumn as it can throw up a range of species as this session turned out. Here I'm using clip down rigs, one with three hooks, the other my sole rig with two snuds, but the bottom one is panelled. Bait is Welsh lug and lower snuds and ragworm above. I'm whacking these out some distance and trying to keep them fairly well apart as there is a bit of a tidal pull. I'm using my 15 foot Technos VT rods and the main line is 20 pound braid. I'm keeping the rods down low as I'm targeting flatfish and I'm also getting a boom rig ready just in case my other two rigs don't work. Conditions are perfect for place with a light offshore breeze, a fairly flat sea and bright conditions. A boom rig has a pyramid lead which will give this a little bit more grip and nail it to the bottom better. The sinkers on the two rigs already out don't have spikes 
so these allow them to roll a little bit in the tide. This also makes it easier to drag these rigs in order to entice a bite. This is a bit of a slow start, so I'm switching over one of the rigs to the boom rig. First fish is a nice tub gurnard on a top snood of a free hook clip down rig. boom rig replaced my sole rig so I've just rebaited the sole rig and attaching it to my tripod as a standby. Decent knock on the boom rig. So I strike into what turns out to be the first of two place in this session.
not sizeable, but welcome nonetheless. Soon after, and I'm into a schoolie, and he seemed to be ever present here in the autumn. Another bite straight away. and another scorely of almost identical size. As the sun starts to set, I get another tub Gurnard, and that is then followed by a whiting. Another little knock, but I missed a bite, so I'm suspecting that it's another whiting. Just after recasting the boom rig, I get a bite on my other rod, and uh, this time it's the second place on the top snood of a free hook clip down rig. So this one's been caught on ragworm.
It's now turning dark and since I haven't got my head torch I'm using a lantern on my tripod but I'm able to see my rod tips quite clearly because Langham Hotel is nice and lit up. And it's just about I didn't pack up earlier because my luck is in and I finish off the session with a fairly nice form back ray. Having caught that ray on ragworm, I tried for another, but it wasn't to be. So I've ended up with what is a typical mixed catch for autumn at Eastbourne, and although welcomed, I would have swapped that form back ray for a sole. 